Hello, it's Richard Pierce from Finextra TV, and uh, I'm joined today by Rissi Sakra, uh, who's co-founder of Mantle Labs, and Jean Pierre, Chief Business Officer. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. Good, Good to morning, see Richard, you, Richard, and thanks for having me here today. Well, you know, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm always excited about these conversations, but uh, this one is really important for me because we've got this Sustainable Finance Live workshop coming up, and, and I met with you guys. Uh, and, and the story that you've got, which is all to do with this satellite sensors, spatial data, all the way through to risk and to financing, is a, is a great story we're going to hear about from you guys today. So, um, but first of all, Rishi, John, you, you first of all, Rishi, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you got into this uh, and your background uh, and what Mantle's all about. So, uh, thanks, Richard. So, my background is actually in risk management for financial institutions. So doing you know, a lot of uh, risk management implementations across you know, credit risk, market risk, operation risk, across you know, banking, insurance, and similar institutions. Now, uh, me and my uh, co-founder, you know, Swapnil, have been in this business for almost a couple of decades. And what happened is you know, when we used to implement these solutions for our clients, we would do it for different portfolios. So if you look at banking as an example, we would do it, let's say, for the personal loan portfolio, for the mortgage portfolio, for the credit cards, et cetera. But they would always come back with a question saying, you know, this looks great, but can we have something for the agricultural portfolio? So the questions have essentially been, you know, coming back from our clients for almost a couple of decades. So we thought, you know, let, let's figure out, you know, if we have a solution for the agricultural portfolio specific and to look at financial risk in that particular domain. So around, uh, you know, 10, 15 years back, we, have con we had conceptualized the concept of how this will work in terms of a framework. And we had presented to some of our clients as well. But what was happening is, you know, in terms of the cost, it was not becoming feasible, you know, to deploy these solutions. Of course, because of certain issues on technology, you know, uh, lack of, you know, uh, source data available. So the solution that we had actually proposed and, you know, uh, designed a framework for use satellite data. And as we know, you know, 50 years back, you know, the kind of satellite data also was not feasibly, uh, what actually are not feasible enough to use. So then, you know, we waited for some time uh, till this particular aspect became commercially viable. And around five years back, you know, we started this entire company. So uh, the company now focuses on using satellite data and using the satellite data to create financial risk management solutions for banking, uh, insurance, and similar industries related to agriculture. Now, while, you know, when we had formed the company, we used to always be in touch with, you know, uh, academic experts all over the world. And that's where we met our third co-founder, Dr. Clement Heinzberger. So Clement is the Dean of Remote Sensing at the Land Sciences Institute of Vienna University. And that's where, you know, Clement came in as an expertise as well. So, you know, he has expertise almost 30 years in the remote sensing space. So uh, with our exp experience on the financial risk management side and his experience on the remote sensing side, it became a good solid team, you know, core team to actually launch this particular platform. And incidentally, and incidentally, since John is here on the call to, I mean, in the discussion today, uh, we had actually gone to John in London to pitch our solution. So maybe, John, you can give a short intro on yourself as well. Yeah, that's great. Let's hear from you, John. Thanks for that. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for having us, Richard. Um, so, just going on to what uh, Rishi was saying, um, my background is uh, as an agriculture commodities trader for a decade. I'm at a bank, a, a hedge fund, and a large commodity trader. Um, and I actually had a team of uh, remote sample well, AI experts who were trying to model crop production globally, so we could take a view on the markets. Now, a common problem that I'm sure many people were familiar with or are familiar with is, is cloud cover in satellite imagery. Um, so this was really a problem we had and, you know, in areas like Brazil or anywhere you tend to grow crops, um, you, you tend to have clouds. And that's, that's a real problem when you're trying to model the production. So anyway, I had started to advise the satellite applications catapult. And I asked my friends there, you know, do you know a startup um, anywhere in the world who have solved this problem of cloud cover in, in satellite imagery. And they said, why don't you speak to these chaps at Mantle Labs, um, UK company, um, who have actually solved this. So Rishi and Swapno came to my office and, you know, um, you know, essentially pitching, like Rishi was saying, the solution. And it was clear quite quickly that this was a revolutionary technology uh, built by some, you know, people with 
world leader expertise. That was very clear early on. I've seen many solutions and this really stood out. Um, and also they understood the financial services sector. Um, so, you know, from those two perspectives, you know, it was a real standout solution company. Um, and when, you know, they said they wanted to scale the business, I really jumped at the opportunity to join as the chief business officer. So, um, you know, happy to be here. Today. So, yeah. So, so let, make it really clear for everybody, because, you know, I, I'm sort of getting fairly deep into this stuff and I find it fascinating. But, you know, give us an example, perhaps, of one of your, you know, use cases or customer examples of this sort of end to end uh, process and outcomes uh, that, that can be achieved as a result of this. Because, of course, and again, just to frame it, everybody's worried about the data that's being used for sustainable finance and ESG for capital allocation decisions um, because it's a disclosure that comes in sort of annually and it's a, right. marking their own homework and lots of rating agencies. So tell us, you know, what, what problem is this solving? How do you go about it, Rishi? Correct. That's a good question. So if you look at the problem itself, there are two sides of the coin, if I could you know, put it as that. So if you look at on one side, you have the final users of the product or consumers of the product. So you're talking about essentially, in our case, farmers. Now, uh, when I say farmers, I'm talking about all kinds of farmers. So smallholder farmers in uh, developing countries and your large farmers in you know, developed geographies as well. So that's you know one side of the uh, solution that we need to cater to. The second part of the solution, you know, which is uh, designed specifically for the large financial institutions, so whether it's banking or insurance, which are providing solutions to the farmer. So essentially, you're talking about farmer, uh, let's say in this case, crop loans, or let's say crop-related insurance. Now, uh, when we built the solution, we we didn't, you know, have the approach where you build a cool technology and then go to the client and say, you know, would you like to use it? So we did not do that. Uh, we knew, you know, what the requirements were there on both sides of this coin. Now, if you look at from a farming perspective, uh, the uh, issue that happens is, you know, that the, the market is very big, if you look at it from a global perspective. Uh, but all these farmers, you know, specifically, let's say, if you look at smallholder farmers, they did not have access to what, what we call as affordable credit and affordable and effective crop insurance. So that was the essentially, you know, the main problem statement. Now, when we approached the banks and insurance companies and we had a detailed discussion with them in terms of why is it that you know, we are not offering the products that we have to these farmers? So they came up with you know, a couple of reasons. And of course, uh, uh, the reasons themselves you know, stand true. So the fact is, you know, when we're looking at developed, uh, developing geographies and you know, very remote uh, locations and very large locations, you know, typically country size kind of analysis, there is no historical information available at all. So whether it is on crop performance, you know, how the yields have moved over time. So going right down from a country kind of scale and then individual field level if required. So this sort of information did not exist. So as a consequence, what happened is when a financial institution needs to offer a product to the farmer, they ended up pricing the risk, you know, uh, essentially pricing unnecessary risk into the product. So what you end up with is a product which is very expensive and it's simply not affordable to be rolled out. So these were the two issues where I know we know the market exists. We also know the you know the the financial institutions want to lend, but because of these you know gaps in the market, the product simply whether it's credit for smallholder farmers or you know crop insurance for smallholder farmers was not picking up. So essentially, what we have done is we've used, uh, of course, with our significant experience with our team in Vienna, uh, which Clement heads. So we've developed a technology which looks at you know satellite data is able to mix it all together. Uh, which is like an AI engine in itself, and it's unique to what we do. And we also have an internal engine with what uh, John was mentioning called Helios. And what Helios does is, you know, it, it takes up the satellite data, and whenever you have cloud cover, it identify, identifies the clouds and fills up the data caps. Now, because of that, what we are able to provide our clients is, of course, uh, a clean data stream over time without any data gaps at all. So from an analysis perspective, it's a perfect data set. And on top of that, since we know about these industries, what we have offered to our clients, and specifically in this case, banks or insurance companies, is the final risk score that they can use. So if it's banking, we straight away offer them a credit score, which scales right from a regional level credit score and getting down to a field level if required. And from the insurance perspective, uh, again, what is happening is you know, traditionally insurance would effectively be designed at a field level for specific events or what they call as perils in the industry. So it's essentially, you know, let's say a single peril and, you know, priced at that individual field. 
Now again, because of uh, certain issues in the product and the way the pricing is done, it is becoming too expensive. So what we have done is again on the insurance side, just like how we've done on the banking side, we've designed a product which is you know multi-peril. It works across the entire cropping cycles, right from sowing to harvest, and it has everything that would affect crop health built in the product, still keeping it extremely cost effective. So it's an index product that we've developed. So these are the solutions that you know we partnered with our banking uh, our clients in the banking industry and the insurance industry, and this is what is now getting rolled out so that our you know farmers all over the world now will have access to you know affordable credit and affordable and effective crop insurance and both of these are what we call as breakthrough products yeah absolutely and that's beautifully described because i think it really is quite complicated at one level to think about how you go from satellites through to um, climate and uh, ecosystem uh, analysis through to risk and then through to pricing and, and actually affecting right, right. you know the end user and you've described it incredibly well so essentially, you know, they're sitting there and they can know their their um, their risk both on their credit and on their, if you will, climate risk. It's obviously crop here, um, which is which is amazing. And you're partnering, I think, aren't you, with some um, some people, um, you know, where you access the the, the capability of uh, of getting the risk uh, decision uh, put to the market. Um, so, so John, on that disclosure piece, you know, what's what's your reaction um, to how Mantle Labs can actually help in that area? Yeah, that's a it's a good question, Richard. And I think you know we see that the UK is at the forefront now in making companies having to make climate related disclosures. Um, when we work across the agriculture supply chain, obviously we are from input providers all the way to food retailers. You know, food and agriculture contributes thirty five percent potentially, you know, at least 35 or, or probably up to 35% of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so there's a lot of uh, leeway for companies having to make these disclosures. And we can look at their supply chain and see, you know, things like station and, um, you know, how we can assist farmers in, in utilizing precision agriculture. And also when companies um, need to look at offsetting projects, nature-based solutions, looking at forestry projects, or helping smallholder farmers and, and the like. Um, we have the tools to allow them to monitor, verify and report exactly what's taking place on the ground and see how these interventions are actually, you know, making a meaningful change to their carbon accounting equations. So that's an interesting area definitely to look at going forward. Yeah, that's going to be very, very useful for people, I think, in many aspects and certainly an area that we're going to sort of get into in the workshop as well. Great. Thanks very much. So when you when you look at this, we we often talk, John, about um, uh, you know historically you you're always looking at the past and you're trying to sort of benchmark that, and obviously that's where a lot of risk decisions come from. Here you're obviously starting to bring in some predictive, you know, it's more it's not real time necessarily, I don't think, but it's it's much more uh, much more up to date data. You know, is it important? Do you think that you bring these two the, the past and the future together to give you the, the total richness. Um, I assume you're always building on the past. But tell me, John, in your words, how you how you feel this comes together. Yeah, so that's a good point, Richard. And I think, you know, just putting on my statistics hat on, um, obviously, we're always trying to have the best data possible when trying to build a predictive model. Um, and I think in a lot of the countries, um, where we are dealing with when it comes to agriculture, there is a lack of any historical data on yields or production profiles of crops. So, you know, given that we have a multi decade um, data set of, of data from the satellites and the ability now to harness that using the AI algorithms that Rishi described, and obviously also tools like Microsoft Azure as well. Uh, which are very useful in scaling those solutions. Um, I think we're really at a breakthrough moment now in the last few years in terms of utilizing, you know, data sources like remote sensing for building risk management tools going forward. I think an, a great example actually is some of our work uh, when it comes to, you know, sustainability around, you know, forestry and also looking at things like uh, coastal wetlands, which we're just starting to get into. Uh, you know, there was no historical data around, um, you know, accurately monitoring and identifying mangroves, for example. Um, but this, these are things where we're able to come in and 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 facilitate 
um, payment for ecosystem services uh, models of business. So connecting those, um, you know, natural capital um, assets to carbon markets, for example, because we have the data and we are able to predict, you know, where is deforestation kind of taking place? What's the health of different kinds of vegetation and how this affects carbon sequestration and other kind of um, KPIs? So I think, you know, it's, it's really exciting to see how we can predict now and the new data sets that are emerging. And obviously, we're excited to be at the forefront of that push. And I think using technology, as you were describing, I, I, I think it's hard. I mean, I was at Microsoft for donkey's years and it just it goes at such a pace, um, you know, but, you know, bringing in ingesting data. You're talking here about satellite and sensor and obviously historical data. But there will be all sorts of forms of data, you know, from scientists in the field as well that, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to ingest over time so that you'll be able to bring, you know, a rich service together. I mean, how does how does the technology play in this? You've spoken about the cloud. You've spoken about AI. Can you give us a right. sense of, of your technology play here a little bit, if you can? All right. So what you've done is, you know, we've uh, since we work with clients, which are essentially global, you know, they operate typically in multiple countries. So we've always had to build a solution which would scale globally and still, you know, remain reasonably cost effective. So what we had done is, you know, on day one itself, we decided, okay, let's have a couple of things. So one is the cloud cleaning technology, which I've explained, which is again, unique to our company. We are the only ones in the world who have it. But the, just before that, we also mix multiple satellite data together. So we take uh, data sources from, you know, our uh, publicly available satellites, you know, such as uh, satellites from ESA, from NASA, we mix all that information together and we create what we call as standardized data sets. The data set itself is a global data set and is broken up into you know, a couple of what we call as uh, spatial resolutions on the ground so that we can then process it forward and create indices out of it. Now, underlying to all of this, of course, what John was mentioning is the underlying is the processing capacity and the AI algorithms that get attached to this particular data set. Now, what we have done is, you know, it is very important. I mean, we could have built this solution, you know, 10, 15 years back. But like I said, at that point of time, the satellites were not available or, you know, they were too expensive to access. And secondly, the processing capacity was not available. So if you look at, you know, cloud infrastructure, you know, such as your, uh, for example, Google, you know, Azure from Microsoft, AWS, et cetera, we've recently, you know, stabilized, you know, five, six, seven years back. And that, you know, allowed, you know, companies such as us to now have, you know, this processing capacity with our AI algorithms and offer these solutions to our clients. Now, what we have done is, you know, from our perspective, we now uh, are looking to scale the solution globally. And of course, we have uh, excellent partners such as, you know, Microsoft Azure, where we've not only now stabilized our platform, but even from a scaling perspective, we have these excellent partners which help us on the technical aspects as well. I think it's incredible. And, and, you know, I think back to the sort of fintech boom of, two, you know, post 2008. I was in London for that. You had a financial crisis. You had yeah. lots of people being made redundant, but you had the growth of mobile cloud shared workspaces, you know, lots of computer science grads who couldn't get a job and lots of old gray hairs who, you know, knew the inner workings. It seems that there's, again, a similar nexus of forces here in terms of a climate crisis, obviously um, COVID, but these technologies coming together at the same time as a regulatory um, uh, push for climate disclosure. Do, do, you, do you feel that, John, uh, in, in your observations, that it feels like now is the time for this to come to fore? Um, Rishi, uh, do you want to answer that question? So Rishi, do you think that yeah. this is the time? Yes, so what has happened is, and again, this is just, you know, how the timeline has actually panned out. So you had, you know, technology now available for processing, you know, the huge capacities. In 2016, you know, we had the excellent sensors which are launched by NASA. So we have an excellent set of satellites now which we can use. But also what has happened over time, and very interesting, this is more of a business switch that has happened. So if you look at your large financial institutions, you know, globally, uh, a lot of the traditional markets today are now saturated. So if you look at from a purely from an agriculture, you know, business perspective, they, it is it is now getting uh, more of a, it's, it's becoming more of a business push for them to enter newer markets. Now, when they enter this new, enter any new market, whether it's, you know, any developing country, any continent, et cetera, they have actually no data at all, you know, in terms of trying to, you know, design their uh, pricing engines, or let's say to decide, you know, how to price a particular product. 
Now, in this case, you know, uh, they themselves are now, you know, looking forward to, you know, acquiring these kind of, you know, solutions where they can, you know, have this kind of pricing capacity and understand the risk, you know, at a, at a much more granular scale. So they can still afford, you know, uh, are able to uh, provide an you know, affordable products, for example, to the farmers. So it's, it's like a, let's say, it's like a nice, you know, uh, let's say, uh, change in the timeline, which has happened where 10 years back, you know, we could not even think about, you know, launching the solution. But it was simply yeah. too expensive. To a situation where we have the technology, we have, you know, kind of got uh, something, you know, uh, offering which is unique from the agriculture perspective. And now the companies themselves are looking forward to, you know, using this kind of a technology. So rather than uh, we having to do a push for push into the market is now a pull that is coming from our clients. I bet that's right. Well, listen, um, I'm so excited you're going to join us for the workshop and you're going to share this, you know, in more detail with people. So sustainablefinance.live on December the 8th and 9th, which is going to hear from, um, you know, John Rishi. They're going to be not just speaking, but in the workshops with with others where we talk through all of these things, because all of us are obviously here. You know, the business is important, but uh, <clears throat> a planet on which to do business is even more important. Um, so exactly. thanks for sharing your time. Um, and your expertise and your passion. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on December the 8th and 9th. And uh, John Pierre, good to see you. Uh, and we'll see you both very soon. Thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Richard. Thank you very much.